Good morning, folks. We've got space weather to discuss and some interesting articles, plus excellent visualizations to aid in the imagination. We are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun pretty active. Several sunspot groups, several filaments, no shortage of motion or crackling. If you caught the burst off the bottom right, that was an M-class solar flare, the large spike on the X-ray charts, and it came from that newly developed grouping on the south, turning out of view. The flare and CME were aimed away from Earth and small. But compare that to the CME off the long-duration C-class flare two days ago, and remember, long-duration beats impulsive flares of bigger magnitude all the time. CMEs not even in the same league. That long-duration flare CME is on its way to Earth and expected tomorrow evening, as we've discussed in our last two videos. Quick look at the solar wind shows we have been in unsettled geomagnetic conditions for over a day. Last night, the phi angle flip, a solar wind magnetic reversal, finally dropped Earth's field into storm conditions. This should be totally back to normal by the time that CME arrives tomorrow. Little eye candy here as we look at the northern active region. What a big baby. Monster in size, but a butterfly in the ring. Its lead umbra are maintaining. Its field setup is simple and stable for now. It's only got minor filaments in the complex to disrupt and eject. We will keep watching its morphology today. More eye candy up next, as the heliosphere animation from Goddard SVS has been updated. While it is absolutely meant to show the interstellar medium interaction with the heliosphere bubble, boy, looks like a ton of dust arriving with something at the galactic scale. Thus, it is decreed this shall henceforth be regarded as an adequate visualization of why the corona, F corona, and interplanetary space are becoming dustier than they were before. That's a catastrophism Easter egg right there. And we are off to one last bit of eye candy, as Hubble has snapped a baby star's scream cry at stellar ignition. Hubble actually snaps HH34 every couple of years to see the progression of the jet features. By far, the best one yet here. And we'll do similar scoping up at galactic levels, where it appears Dragonfly is going to be everything promised. That is awesome news for science, awesome news for the team involved, and utterly terrible news for cosmologists desperately clinging to the Lambda Cold Dark Matter model. If you thought the lost light of Hubble revealed that there are no islands in space, just wait for Dragonfly. And lastly here, folks, I have to say, back in 2011, I did know pretty confidently that pre-earthquake electromagnetic signals were real. But where the field has taken this concept has astounded me. I could never have imagined all the ways we're now seeing Earth snitch on herself before megaquakes and... One day, they will surprise us no more. Latest in a list of thousands of papers that are similar to this one is in your link list today. We greatly appreciate your support. Eyes on the sun in case more comes. We're 36 hours away from CME impact. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.